Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's RTC TV4 coverage as the cast and lady comments play host to the Rochester Lady Zebras here at the Comment Crater. I'm Blair Zimmerman, joined tonight up here uh, at the press table with, by Gavin Hickel. Gavin, how you doing? I'm doing all right, Blair. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. You know, uh, last time I was saying your name, it was you were down on the gridiron uh, getting the fire beat out of you sometimes and doing your own share of beating. So glad that you're up here and uh, able to join me again for ladies basketball. I'm glad. I'm happy to be here. So uh, uh, just about 10 minutes ago, the uh, JV Comets were victorious over the JV Zebras. So we're going to have to see how this goes going into the varsity matchup. Uh, I see that both teams uh, lost their scrimmage coming into tonight. Tonight is the official season opener. Um, John Harrell Stats is predicting Rochester to be victorious with a 48-32 uh, lead. So um, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Uh, John Harrell usually does their homework, and by whatever voodoo that they use to come up with their <laughs> scores, they're usually pretty close. Uh, if they're not right on the on uh, the scores, they're right on the spread or within just a few points. So I don't think uh, 48 or 32 is a is an enormous difference between either. So I no, feel like not not for basketball. I mean, it's it could be a toss up maybe tonight. It really maybe could be a little closer than that. Part of it's going to depend on how the girls are gelling out here on the floor, obviously. Um, so. Uh, and since I have, I wasn't able to get to the scrimmage on Thursday, so I'm not sure how that was looking. Uh, I, uh, that cast and played Argus. I'm right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know, like I said, I know that we, I know that we lost that scrimmage. Um, I had an opportunity to talk to uh, senior Aubrey Degg yesterday, um, and she said, you know. The, First half of the game, you, things weren't perfect, but she felt like she was on her game for the first half and then came out on the floor after halftime and just you know, couldn't get things going. So uh, we'll just have to see how things start out from here tonight. So uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, we've got just over eight minutes until opening tip off. So it's a perfect opportunity to make sure that you've got your snacks lined up and you got yourself a drink. Uh, in the meanwhile, we're going to step away for a couple words from our sponsors, and Gavin and I will be back. Stay tuned. You're watching Casting TV on RTC TV4. Hi, I'm John Oliver with some great news if you're shopping for a pre-owned F-150 or Ford Escape. Two of America's best-selling vehicles, and right now we have an incredible lineup to choose from. These are all local trades, so the history is no mystery. No Canadian units here, F-150s and Escapes, all priced to sell, all Oliver Ford Lincoln certified. So get more for your money and more for your trade with Oliver Ford Lincoln in Plymouth. Simplify your banking with a Simply Free Checking account from First Federal Savings Bank. At First Federal Savings Bank, we appreciate your referrals. Refer your friends to open a Simply Free Checking account. When your friend opens a checking account, you can both receive a free gift. It's easy as one, two, three. Simply Free Checking from First Federal Savings Bank, a simpler way to bank. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. Simplify your banking with a Simply Free Checking account from First Federal Savings Bank. All it takes is $50 to open the account with no minimum balance and no monthly service fees. For a limited time, you will also receive a free gift just for opening the account. And with Instant Issue, we can give you a debit card right when you open your account, giving you immediate access to your funds. Simply Free Checking from First Federal Savings Bank, a simpler way to bank. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. At First Federal Savings Bank, we enjoy helping first-time homebuyers. And with our premier first-time homebuyer program, there's no private mortgage insurance cost. Only as little as 5% down is required for this program. Talk with one of our experienced mortgage lenders and let us help you purchase your first home. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank.
First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years, and now we're offering commercial lending. Are you looking to purchase commercial real estate, equipment, or open a business line of credit? First Federal Savings Bank is your locally owned community bank for all your business banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was informed while we were on that commercial block that uh, Thursday was first official games. Uh, I mis made a mistake thinking they were just scrimmages, so the first of many mistakes that I will make through the course of this season, I'm sure. Most of the time, though, it's uh, butchering names. Which I'll oh, do. yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll we'll do have that. fun with that. So, I don't know. Most of these names look pretty pretty standard here so um, did see um, coach Brian Jennings actually uh, never mind scratch that anyway coach Brian Jennings he's in his second season um, with the Lady Zebras and then I believe we're in coach Helmick's fourth season Gav help me out here Gav, um, I think so Yes, fourth season. So. So, Gavin, do you have any predictions for tonight? Well, you know, I don't I don't know, I guess. I, I feel like I definitely have some if I had seen Caston's first game. <laughs> Or even Rochester's, I guess. But no, I'm. I have no clue what's about to happen. Well, I'm, I'm looking at our varsity lineup. Uh, we do have three young ladies dressing varsity. Uh, three freshman young ladies dressing varsity. We got more than three dressing varsity. That'd be hard to play. Huh. Um, for the comments and three for the zebras. And um, I know that. The incoming freshman, for the comments at least, had a stellar eighth grade season, um, and so I know that there was a lot of a lot of promise looking at that this freshman class. And of course, one of the freshmen dressing varsity for the comments is Delaney Strasser, who uh, last year played for the middle school zebras. So uh, transfer this year. She ran cross country for me. A lot of heart in that young lady. A lot of fight. So, again, I think a lot of it's going to come down, though, to how the five ladies on the court at any given time are gelling together. Um, you know, later in the season, well, like you said, once you kind of have a feel for strengths and uh, weaknesses for each team, it, it's kind of easier to have an idea of what we're going to be looking at. Well, yeah, as we uh, as we progress throughout the season and uh, see more and more of these games, I I'll definitely have more <laughs> predictions for you there. Well, and I did see uh, senior Jasmine Rudisol was uh, she was in her candy stripes. I think I know that she was out for the cross country season uh, due to a knee injury. Uh, not sure where she's at in her rehabilitation. Uh, to actually start playing yet. Uh, but she is listed on the roster, so hopefully hopefully she doesn't have to give up two whole seasons her senior year. It's always hard to it's always hard when you see a senior sideline sideline due to injury. Aiden Sarver uh, during football season. Chris Smith last year. It's I mean we always hate to see one of our athletes injured. But it's even worse, I think, when it's the senior season. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of senior seasons, uh, so I saw that you're working out with the wrestling team this year. You're gonna put the singlet back on, finish yeah. out your, finish yeah. out that senior career. Yeah, I give it a try. Just see how it goes. I mean, what's the worst that could happen <laughs> last year? Well, I'm counting on you for track, so I can think of a lot of worse things that could happen. Yeah, true. 
true. But I do know, talking with the coaching staff, uh, they said last year when you came in and just worked out with the guys, um, just some sparring, they, the, the coaching staff still saw a lot of promise in you, so they were uh, really happy that you came back this year. So it's always nice to be wanted, right? Yeah, yeah. Feels pretty good. Oh. Is it just me, or does it look like uh, Kasten has lost a few cheerleaders? That is a fairly sparse uh, cheer squad, but there was also the um, fish and tenderloin fry going on this evening. Ah, okay. So. And tonight, Sophie Jellison will be presenting something to her teacher that has influenced her the most. So if we could have Mrs. Myers, the Caston High School business teacher, come on down. And while she's walking down, I will tell you what Sophie has written about her. <laughs> Sophie says, she has influenced me by always pushing me to do my best. She is always giving good advice to her students. She cares not just for what will benefit us in our four short years of high school, but cares what will benefit us in our future. Mrs. Myers, thank you. Well, that's a cool thing I wasn't expecting. Yeah, that is pretty nice. At this time, I'd like to have everyone rise and lift your hands and join in as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Tonight, our national anthem will be performed by the Casket Band under the direction of Miss Olivia Wooler. Starting lineup. For the Zebras, number three, Emma Houdeshell. Number 12, Macy Brown. Number 14, Jizzy, Jenny Isabel. Number 32, Caitlin Rogers. And number 40, Kenzie McKee. And the Lady Zebras, once again, are coached by Coach Brian Jennings. starting lineup. Number 14, Kenzie Molenkoff. Number 15, Lane Oliver. Number 20, Maddie Smith. Number 21, Sophie Jellison. And number 33, Abby Williamson. And once again, the Lady Comets coached by Coach Don Helmick.
I feel like playing with only the uh, court lit would be really cool. That would be kind of cool. For wrestling, actually, uh, the, I think, sectional or conference championship round, uh, they just have one light lit right in the middle. Oh, that's cool. So it's just right over the ring? Yep. I don't know, man. I, I grew up watching wrestling on TV, so I still... I, I, it still oh, messes with me that there's no, you know, turnbuckles and the squared circle and all that. Yeah. I feel like that would have more concussions than football or soccer. Or both of them combined. Well, I have had two concussions from wrestling and two from football, so well, well, they even out. <laughs> no, no, no. I meant if we, if we did it professional wrestling style. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see that happening. <laughs> all right. So we've got Maddie Smith. Squaring off against, looks like Caitlin Rogers. Only about an inch difference in these ladies. And tip goes to Rochester. Got how to show over to Brown in the corner. Top of the key to Isbell. Lady Comets forcing a lot of passes. And Maddie Smith going to draw that first foul. That's team first in that dubious honor of being game first. Somebody's going to get the first foul, though. Well, just over 30 seconds in. <laughs> right. It seems a little quick, but... And shots up, no good. Number three, Emma Houtschel. Molenkoff gonna inbound to Jellison, back to Molenkoff. Kasten calling a 30-second timeout. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors here on Kasten TV on RTC TV4. At Oliver Ford, we reach beyond your dealership expectation, help you in making fun decisions on your new vehicle, or let it try our professional touch by our service and parts department. We are the only Indiana new and used car dealership that has won the President Award 17 times. With over 100 years of sales experience, we're here to hold your hand from start to finish with no pressure or gimmicks. Contact us today. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Just over a minute into the game. Score still 0-0. Emma Houtishel putting pressure on already. Jellison tries to send it down to the corner, doesn't have enough on it. McKee over to Brown. See, my problem is, is I don't know the Rochester names yet. Down in the corner to McKee. Over to How to Show. Inside to McKee. We've got a long two point attempt there by Macy Brown. No good. Wonder who their shooter is going to be. Jellison, or that wasn't Jellison, that was Oliver <laughs> driving towards the timeline. Sends it to Jellison, who draws the foul. Foul there was on number 32, Caitlin Rogers, her first, team first. Jellison, not quite able to get it inbounds to Maddie Smith. Gets knocked out of bounds by the Zebras. Jellison will try it again. Looking for that open man. Deep back to Molenkoff. Molenkoff back to Jellison. Over to Oliver at the volleyball line. Down to Abby Williams. 
And we've got a jump ball. Comets will retain possession. Remember when we were talking about girls games that can get really chippy? Yes. We're in for some of that this year. Oliver to Jellison. Jellison tries to send it up to Williamson, gets picked off. And we've got an easy layup there for Kaitlin Rogers. First score of the game here. Zebra's up 2-0. Lady Comets right now just kind of struggling with ball handling in conjunction with this tight defense being played by the Lady Zebras. Man, Oliver's losing her feet. Turns it over to the Lady Zebras. I have to say though, traditionally, historically, um, both guys and girls Comets basketball has struggled against a tight man-to-man -man defense. Very true. Uh, you know, I think we saw a lot of that last year. We, we do. We see a lot of that. And a lot of times you really see a three-pointer there for uh, how to show off the mark. Um, we see a struggle with that in, uh, in the press. And looks like they're going to call a charge here on Jellison. That looked like a clean screen to me, Gav. But I was thinking if any, I, I wouldn't call it a charge. I probably would have called a moving screen. I didn't get well, a look at yeah, it. Well, yeah, sorry, guess, charge. See, once again, me using the wrong terminology. Moving pick, yes. Nice save attempt there by Molenkoff. Couldn't quite get it to her own teammates. Out of show. Is he going to send it out? Three-point attempt off the mark. Macy Brown just a little off the mark on that. And the Comets will get it back. Dag in for the Comets. Sends it over to Jellison, back to Dag. Dag driving towards the paint. Pass not quite making its mark. Ends up in the hands of Macy Brown. Brown driving towards the paint, sends it out to number 14, Isabel. Isabel shot off the mark. Jellison down towards the key, tries to send Picked it down off. to Klingler. Down underneath, and there's that easy two. Jellison in double coverage back to Deg. Deg in trouble now. Double coverage. Drives towards the paint. Sends it to Smith. Smith down to Jordan Klingler. Klingler goes up for two and draws the foul. She's got a very powerful power dribble. She does. Foul there on number 12, Macy Brown. Her first. Klingler at the line for one. How to show off the floor for the uh, Zebras. Shots up, Klingler just a little too strong on that. And another jump ball down here. This one will go to the Zebras. Just over half the first quarter left. The Zebras currently with the two point advantage. Down to Brown in the corner. Back up to Burkett. Back to Hughes. And Hughes will travel with it. When she went to do that fake pass, I, I saw her foot shift. Oh, uh, Deg actually faked out Williamson on that inbound. Goes straight to Burkett. And Klingler with an over the back. We've got Emily Hughes at the line for two. 
First shot in and out. Second shot in and out again. Comets rebounding that. Dag to Smith in the paint. Smith, ooh, almost traveled on that. Back up to the top of the key to Dag. Williamson, back to Dag. Dagan, heavy double coverage, throws it or heavy coverage, <laughs> throws it away trying to get around Burkett. Take two. Over to Brown, back up to Burkett, back to Hughes, into the corner, too far on that. Maddie Smith heading down court, oh, just short. And to Burkett in the corner, back up to Brown. Over to Rogers, tipped out of bounds by the Comets. Hughes into Brown. Brown back to Hughes. Hughes over to Rogers. Up to Burkett. Back to Rogers. Underneath to Scorsoni. And she'll travel with it. I don't know if that, see, that's, that's one of those names. Is that Scorsone or Scorsoni? Because I know, you know, we have a famous director with a similar name, it's Scorsese. I don't know. I'm going to go with Scorsoni. You'll have to ask him. And uh, nice steal there by Burkett. And Emily Hughes putting two more on the board. Zebra's now with a four-point four lead. Dag across the timeline. Down to Smith at the elbow. And it's going to go out off of the Zebras. Zebra's substituting McKee back in. And Kim Batten taking the floor. Williamson tries to send it into Klingler off her fingertips. Burkett to Hughes. Back to Burkett. Over to Batten. Down to the corner. Well, the baseline drive back up to the top of the key now in the hands of Burkett. Back over to Batten. Back to Burkett, over to Hughes, and it's up. In and out on that long two. Got Burkett down here putting the pressure on. Mollenkopf will send it into Williamson. Williamson goes to send it across to nobody. We've just had we've that, had several of those. Well, that was like very good pressure that Burkett had on. Him. And Burkett putting two more on the board. Oh, we're just the comments aren't talking out here on the floor. A lot of times you'll you'll hear them communicating up here in spite of having headsets on, and tonight I'm not hearing it. And so we've got a lot of, we had a foul down here. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, somebody cuts and falls back. And uh, that foul there was on Kim Batten, her first. Yeah, the communication really, really right. should be there. Right, because we have people cutting and, and the ball going to where they were headed. And then they're not there. Jellison tries to send it to Smith, gets tipped away from her. Hughes, oh that's not Hughes, now it's Hughes. Out to Batten, Batten back to Hughes. Hughes to McKee. You got Brown sending it back to Batten.
And I didn't see what that call was. Batten in the corner. Up to Brown. Shots up just a little hard. Was that her third shot attempt, I think? Third attempt. She's one for three right now. Jellison now at the volleyball line, sends it down to Molenkoff in the corner. She's going to kick it baseline. Great pass. Smith goes up, draws the foul. She'll go to the line for two. Foul there was on number 20, Emily Hughes, her first. Team fifth or sixth? Fifth. Shots up, and just a touch short on that. Second shot, drains it. And that's the first quarter at the end of eight minutes of play. Rochester Zebras nine, Cast and Comets three. We'll be back right after these words from our sponsors here on Cast and TV on RTC TV4. Let RTC TV4 highlight your business or service in our local sports coverage. Through our platform, you have the option to use a 30 second commercial that you already have, or you can have us make a 15 second logo sponsorship for you. With eight local schools in our partnership, we're sure you'll reach your intended audience. Sponsor with RTC TV4 today. Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have the teams back on the floor here momentarily. After one quarter of play, Rochester Zebras with a fairly commanding six-point lead. Um, at the end of that first quarter, uh, Rochester leading in fouls. As a matter of fact, I missed a foul somewhere along the way because I've only got four down on the sheet. Um, but Kasten majorly leading in turnovers almost at a two-to-one rate. The Lady Comets are going to have to get those turnovers under control or the rest of the game is going to be more of the same. Ball into Degg. Degg to Jellison. Jellison back to Degg. Down to Molenkoff. Back up to Degg at the volleyball line. And picked off. Easy layup there for number three, Emma Howdeshell. She'll stretch that lead just a little bit more. Degg to Jellison. Jellison back to Degg, almost picked off again. Back to Maddie Smith. Smith to Klingler, who's gonna put it in for two. Klingler with all five of Kasten's points so far. And... Maddie Smith with one. Hey, you know what? I looked at the wrong column. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Emma how to show with a carry on that. See, that's what I have you here for, is to just point out when I make very public, very live mistakes. A little hard on that shot there by Molenkoff. Foul here on number 11, that's her second. Smith off the front of the rim. Second one's up and off to the right. Can't be missing them extra points, those are crucial. Oh, absolutely. Now, how many games have we seen won and lost? just off of missed free throws. Too many. How to shell now. Gonna kick it out to Brown. Back to how to shell into the paint. Number 12, Brown. Batten with a three-point attempt. 
was no good, followed up by two. Klingler to Jellison, back to Dag. Maddie Smith tries to send it inside to Klingler, gets picked off. These picked off passes have just resulted in more Zebra's points tonight. That's where communication could probably come in oh, and help prevent that. Absolutely. Gonna have somebody reach over the back here, tip it away from Jordan Klingler, but I think we had, uh, we've got a foul here on Aubrey Digg. Her first, team fourth. How to show to the top of the key. Kicks it over to Brown. She puts it up, in and out. <laughs> Foul here on number 32, Caitlin Rogers. Her second. Team seventh. Gonna send Jellis into the line for one and one. First shot up and in. Second shot just a little hard, goes off the back of the rim. Big collision. And Zebras come up with possession off of that one. Ball over to Brown. Back to How to Show. Up to Hughes. Over the corner to Mercedes Brown. Back to Hughes. Back to How to Show. How to Show around the outside to Hughes. Hughes tries to send it inside, and I think we're going to end up with a jump ball on this. Zebras maintain possession. Three point attempt there by number 12, Macy Brown off the mark. Comets get the rebound. Jellison called for a travel on that. I was thinking that was an out of that bounds line. before it had been in trouble. Zebra is calling a timeout here. We're going to step away for this word from our sponsors on Casting TV on RTC TV4. At Co-Alliance Propane, we treat our customers like neighbors because, well, that's what we are. When you trust Co-Alliance Propane as your seriously local propane provider, you're trusting a team of professionals who live, work, and watch the game from right across the county, not the country. A team that's close by and seriously dedicated to your safety and providing the best service possible. Find out more about Co-Alliance Propane's seriously local service and how you can get 50 gallons of propane free at CoAlliancePropane.com. At Co-Alliance, we understand the importance of community. After all, we've been farmer-owned since the 1920s. And now that we're a part of your community, we want to become your total agronomy solutions provider. Co-Alliance offers the latest in ag technology for your operation. From field scouting and fertilizers to premium seed and precision agriculture, we can help take your operation to the next level. Put the resources of your local cooperative to work. Contact Co-Alliance today. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies taking the floor out here. 5.15 left in the half. How to shell over to Hughes, or not Hughes, Brown. Up and out. Dag colliding with Jellison, struggling to get it over the Heavy timeline. Press. And uh, we have Comets calling a timeout now. All right, we'll be right back after these words here on Casting TV. 
Save money when you switch your home phone service to VoIP from RTC. Everyone knows that RTC Fiber Communication is the area's leading provider of high-speed fiber optic internet service. Now, RTC can help save you money on your monthly phone bill by switching your phone over to the internet with VoIP. Same great service at a fraction of the cost. Contact RTC today to find out more about this money-saving offer. Online at www.rtc1.com. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Jellison's got it over here on sideline, sends it into Molenkoff. I'm surprised Molenkoff didn't get called on travel on that. Jellison sends it over Handy footwork to, there, no. yeah. Lane <laughs> Oliver gets tipped across the half court line. Dag recovers it, and they're going to call a jump ball. You know, Comments keep in possession. There's something about the sound of uh, skin hitting the floor that yeah. I, I, I just don't like. Floor burns are uh, not trophies. pleasant. No, <laughs> yeah. End of day. Once again, heavy coverage here. Coach Hummick over here looks like he's pulling his hair out. And we've got a foul here on Emily Hughes. It'll be her second, team eighth. Molenkoff taking the line now. One and one. Shot rolls good. Second shot up and nothing but net on that one. Molenkoff putting two more on there. Brings the Zebras lead down to five. Hughes into How to Shell. How to Shell going to kick it out to Brown. Brown up to Burkett. Back to Brown. Into the paint to Hughes. And pass picked off. And turn back over to the Zebras. Burkett down to Brown. For the easy layup, she misses that, but gets clobbered by Jordan Klingler. Is that Jordan's second on the night or third? Uh, that's her second on the night, team fifth. First shot, bounces out. Second shot up, and it's good. Ball into Dag. Over to Molenkoff. And Molenkoff with the travel. And Zebra's on another timeout. We'll be back after these words from our sponsors here on Casting TV on RTC. TV4. Whatever phone fits your style, RTC Fiber Communications can save you money when you switch to VoIP. VoIP is a phone service that leverages the power of the internet to save you money on your monthly phone bill. Same great service at a fraction of the cost. Contact RTC today to find out more about this money saving offer online at www.rtc1.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Ball in how to show. Over to Burkett. Down to Brown. Back over to how to show. Left side. Brown cut and baseline. Back to how to shell over to Burkett. Burkett back to Brown. Klingler gets involved with that, and Molenkoff comes away with it. Molenkoff over to Jellison. Jellison across midcourt and loses control of it. Didn't look as clean as the ref thought it was, but he's the boss.
out of shell. Top pieces are over to Burkett. Over to Brown for three. In and out. Foul there on number one, Cammy Burkett. That's her first. Team nine. Jell's in the line for one and one. Shots up and good. Got Maddie Smith coming back in. Gonna give our deck some time on the bench. Jell's in the second shot up and nothing but net. Get in out of shell across midcourt. Drive in, dump it back to Brown. Back out to Burkett. Over to Shell for three. Off the far side of the rim. Brown three. And it's good. Uh, is that her first of the night? Uh, that is. It's her first bucket of the night. Certainly not first attempt. Jellison over to Smith. Smith just about to lose control of it. Over to Molenkoff. Molenkoff up to the three-point line. Sends it into the paint to Smith. Smith sends it down to Klingler. Gets knocked out of bounds by number 14 of the Zebras, Jenny Isbell. 2.44 left in the half. Zebras 17, Comets 10. Jellison in deep to Klingler. Over to Lane Oliver. She tries to kick it back out to Smith. Into the waiting arms of number 11, Kim Batten. They can't keep turning this ball over. Out to Batten. That was way too hard on that three. Comments with the rebound. Jellison across midcourt over to Smith. Back to Jellison. Up to Molikoff who puts up three. Just a little off the mark. Foul here on number. Could have sworn he said 15. I don't see a 15 on the roster. How about 14? There is a 14 on the roster. Jenny Isbell, her first. It's going to put Klingler in the line for two. Both of those good. Bring the Zebras back to a five point lead. Two of seven left in the quarter. Send it down into the paint. Kick it back out to number 23. Puts it up to three. Mercedes Brown stretching that back out to an eight-point lead. Rochester's been hitting their three-pointers tonight. They have. Has Caston hit any? I uh, don't believe so. Lane Oliver getting, uh, getting a little hot under the color out there. No, I've only got Caston down for one three-point attempt for the night. And we're going to turn the ball over again. Ball into Mercedes Brown. She's going to bring it to the volleyball line. Kick it back out to Brown. Puts up an effortless three-point attempt. Too hard. We're gonna have another foul here, number 14, Jenny Isbell, her second. Team 11th. Smith of the line for two. First shot off the front of the rim. Burke 
it back in for the Zebras. Second shot up. That one's too hard. Oliver and Burkett tying that up. It's going to go to the Zebras. Oliver almost whipped her around the court. <laughs> I've seen her do that before. Yep. Brown across the midcourt line. He's going to kick it out to Kemp, or Macy Brown. Back up to Mercedes. Over to Baton, back to Mercedes Brown, over to uh, Macy Brown. Up and no good. And we've got Kim Batten with, with a shove. Her third. We're going to put Oliver on the line for two. Just under a minute left here in this half. Second shot up, just off the mark. Burke across midcourt. Over to How to Shell. Out to Brown, back to How to Shell. How to Shell in the paint. She's going to kick it out to Mercedes Brown. Back up Burke, over to How to Shell. Out to Key, back to How to Shell. Burke it over Brown, back to Burkett. 27 seconds left in the half. How does she drive towards the paint? Wobs it up, good. <laughs> See Olivia Boldry out on the floor now for the Comets. 20 seconds in the half. Into Burkett. Over to Brown. How does she Back to Brown, Brown free, and it's good. Looks like Brown's going to finish up the half with three. Six seconds left on the clock for the half. Oliver trips. Eight tenths of a second here. That's the half. We're going to head into the locker room here for 23. Council. Whatever phone fits your style. Art. Did you get it? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're back. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, we were having some serious lag here on our end. Anyway, we did use the, uh, we used that downtime to some good advantage. So, Gavin, first half. Guaranteed wrong Zimmerman stats. I know I've missed a few shots, a few turnovers, but this gives us a really good idea of how the first half went. Lady Comets, 0 for 1, three point attempts. 2 for 5, two point attempts. 8 for 17 from the free. Went into the locker room with five fouls on the half. Lady Zebras, 3 15.
All right, and we may be back, Gavin. I fixed it. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I, I don't think Steve's gonna let you have a. I don't think Steve's gonna let you have a, a props on that one. Lady comments here with the turnover. I think while uh, we were watching our computer struggle, that uh, we we missed a uh, shot attempt. Shot up and not quite good there for number three, Emma Houdeshell. And the putback by number 40, Kenzie McKee, is good. Good hustle there by Aubrey Degg. Not quite able to get it in without touching her toe outside. Burkett into Houdeshell. Out of shell kicking it out to Brown. Brown for three. Rolls bad. I really thought that was going to be an over the back foul. Jellison into uh, sure drawing a blank here. Emmy Emma K. <laughs> over to Lane Oliver. Oliver tries, sends it into the paint to Klingler. And uh, Millie Scorsoni just about getting a hold of it. Rolls it out of bounds. Jellison into K. K back to Jellison. Jellison tripping. Foul was on, was that on number 40? Oh no, foul on number three, Emma Houdeshell. Her first, team first in the half. All over to K, K for three, just a little off the mark. Sony up, no good. Brown chasing the ball back across the timeline. Keeps possession, sends it over to Burkett. Back to Brown. Brown to Howdeshell. Howdeshell driving to the paint. Puts it up for two. And she'll go to the line for the end one. Fouls on number 35, Jordan Klingler. Her third, team first in the half. And one for Emma Houdeshell. Jellison to Kay, back to Jellison. Jellison kicks it to Dag. Dag across the timeline. Caught against the sideline by Burkett. Sends it in towards the paint. Oh, and Lane Oliver taking a clothesline.
clothesline there by number 44, Millie Scorsoni. That was a chop. Yeah, it was it was clean though. She was going for the ball. She turned immediately to help Lane up off the ground. Doesn't make it hurt less. No, no. Oliver's first basket up and good. Second shot up. It's also good. That's getting to the hard way. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's capitalizing on the free points. How to shell over to Brown. Back to how to shell. How to shell for three. Just kind of so effortless. Just a little too hard on that. Burkett with the rebound. Over to Brown. Back to how to shell. Back out to Burkett. How to shell on the line, fakes it, thinks about it, sends it over to Brown. Brown down into the paint. Up to Scorsoni, and she puts it in for two. Three on three press down here. Jellison stuck. Sends it over to Molokov. Molokov's gonna have to launch it, or we're gonna have a uh, time violation down here. Emma K nearly got to it. Jordan Klingler did. And Klingler saves it from going out of bounds just to turn it over. Rochester has really been on that press, and that has they, been they a, are, a struggle and, for Caston. And that's leading to the two to one turnover. Burkett for three, it's off the mark. Comets with the rebound. Jellison gets tripped up here by How to Shell. That'll be How to Shell second. Team third on the half. Once again, out fouling the Comets, three to one. We have Mercedes Brown back in for Emma How to Shell. Ball into Emma K. Back to Jellison. Jellison for two, and it's good. That was Jellison's first field goal of the night. It's just kind of how intense the game's been. Over to Burkett. Back to Scorsone. Scorsone. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Brown for three. Bounce is good. Mollenkoff into the trap. Lobs it down to Klingler. Too hard. It'll go back to the Zebras. Mercedes Brown, cross midcourt. Over to Macy Brown. Back to Mercedes, over to Burkett. Back to Mercedes Brown. Inside to Caitlin Rogers, out to Burkett. She puts it up for three. It's no good. I feel like maybe staying back to help your teammate would be a good thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, because. <laughs> wow, and once again, the Comet's struggling with that. Hard press. Oliver puts it up, it's a little too hard. Can't quite get her own rebound. Rogers sends it out to Burkett. Down to the baseline to uh, McKee. Into Brown. Brown sends it to Mercedes Brown in the corner. We got McKee down on the baseline, kicks it out to Burkett. Out to Macy Brown who puts it up for three and it's good. 
Well, that answers your question you asked at the beginning of the game, Gav. Uh, their shooter is Macy Brown. She's not the only one, but she's one of their shooters. Down to the corner to Klingler. Uh, no good for Klingler on that two. Maddie Smith misses two, but draws the foul. Foul is on number 23, Mercedes Brown. Her first, team fourth. Smith off the front of the rim. One for seven so far tonight. Comet's now looking down the barrel of a 20-point deficit. Three minutes left in the quarter. Second shot off the back of the rim. Zebras with the rebound. Underneath to Rogers, no good on that layup. <laughs> Out off the Comets, into Burkett, to the back to the corner to Mercedes. Brown, who's off on that three. And it'll go to the Comets. And to Emma Kay. Burkett coming up to the half court line to meet her. Over to Molenkoff. Back to Kay. Kay back to Molenkoff. Molenkoff getting run back up to the half court line. Loses control of the ball. We'll have a jump ball here. And Comets will retain possession. Emily Hughes and Kim Batten back in for the Zebras. Maddie Smith. Looking for an inbound target. He's going to send it back court to Molenkoff. Molenkoff lobs it down to Emma Kay. Kay tries to send it baseline to uh, Klingler. It's tipped out of bounds by the Zebras. Oliver into Molenkoff. Molenkoff for three. Just a little too hard. The zebras with the rebound. Mercedes Brown across the half court line. Over to Hughes. Into the paint. Outside to uh, Caitlin Rogers. Tenth is no good. Maddie Smith ends up with the ball. She's going to send it in for the layup. Great steal. Great execution. Down to the corner to Batten. We're up to Hughes at the top of the key. Had a foul here on number 14, Jenny Isbell. That'll be her third. Team fifth in the half. See the Rochesters drop that pressure back to the half court line. Molenkoff in double coverage to Smith. Smith to Emma K. Back up to Molenkoff at the top of the key. Down the corner to K. And we've got to travel. Mercedes Brown across midcourt. Kicks it out to Batten. Batten back to Brown. Inside to uh, McKee. And then we got Hughes. Takes a shot. I think it got tipped. Comets with the rebound. Kay in the corner and tries to send it into the paint. It's no good. Emma Kay tips it out of bound. Bounds way to uh, break that drive. Oh. 
Outside to Rogers. Up to Hughes at the top of the key. She sends it into the paint. Back out to uh, Rogers. No good on the three-point attempt. You got it, three, two. 37 seconds left in the third quarter here. Zebra's 36. Comet's 18. Is it just me or do these... Uh Quarters actually, I don't know why, they feel longer than last year. There have reason. been a lot of clock stoppages this quarter, that's for sure. Smith driving to the paint, tries to send it over to Klingler. We've got Mercedes Brown getting in the way of it. Gets called for a kick. Comets will retain possession. Attempt to pass into Molenkoff, rolls off of her arm. Sophie Jellison and Olivia Boldry in for the comments. Ball into Mercedes Brown. Brown across the timeline, 21 seconds on the quarter. Over to Rogers. Back to Brown. Brown for three. Rattles in and out. Need to get in there and help her. Getting boxed in like that must yeah. really just set you into a panic, you know? Especially when there was nobody there to throw it to. Absolutely. That goes back to the communication, though. Communication and court awareness. We're into Rogers. She puts it up for two. It's no good. One point five seconds left here in the quarter before we go into the fourth. And at the end of the third, Lady Zebra's 36, Lady Comets 18. And we'll be right back after this word from our sponsors here on Cast and TV on RTC TV4. The RTC TV4 family of networks allows you to watch nine local television channels dedicated to coverage of our schools and our communities directly on your mobile device through our new app. Just look up RTC TV4 at the App Store or the Google Play Store. There is no cost to download the app or cost to view the live channels. With a paid subscription, you can also view any of our past videos on demand whenever you want. Download the app today and start watching. At First Federal Savings Bank, we offer a wide variety of services for our customers. We offer a variety of deposit products such as personal and business accounts. We pride ourselves in being one of the top mortgage lenders in Indiana. We offer commercial lending and business checking to help with your business banking needs. Through LPL Financial, our financial services department is here to help you with your financial planning needs. Come see us today and see how our family can help your family. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Going into the final eight minutes of play here tonight, Zebras 36, Comets 18. And uh, once again, the uh, Zebra is keeping it to seven turnovers last quarter uh, compared to 13 for the Comets. And it's those turnovers are what are killing the Comets here, though they do force an early turnover for the Zebras in this quarter. Jellison, cross midcourt. Pass to Kay, no good. And uh, Jellison trying, not quite getting her feet planted. She's going to send uh, Kenzie McKee to the line for two. You know, the, uh, the charge and block always kind of, I don't know, sometimes I look at it and I think, man, that's charge. Sometimes I look at it and I think that's a block. Of course, oh, yeah. I'm sitting up here, refs are down there. Right. And uh, at the end of the night, the refs are the boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What they say goes. And I don't want to wear the stripes, to be honest. Yeah. Second shot up, in and out. Comments with the rebound. K dumps it back to Jellison. Up to K. K for three. Just a little too hard on that. Zebras with the rebound. We're going to kick it over to McKee. McKee's going to go baseline. Send it down to Rogers. 
And we're going to have a travel on that. Comet's going to get the ball. Zebra's putting just a touch more pressure on. Batten is over the half court line. Jellison looking for a play. Dumps it over to K. K for two. Just a little shy on that. Zebra's with the rebound. How to show for a long two, and it's good. Actually, I think I saw that signal to three. Brown across midcourt. Over to How to Show. <laughs> Dumps it out to McKee. No good on that. Jellison Some travels on that. Out of show, cross midcourt, top of the key. She sends it over to Macy Brown. Brown goes baseline. Oh, collision down here. Well, that was quite the tumble. That was. Oh, and Jellison getting called for a travel on that. That was a lot of hard work on that. How to shell across midcourt. She's going to put up three. And it's good. That was just so effortless. She just popped, walked up. You know, she's been a real key player for Rochester tonight. Absolutely. Between the threes and just the overall great plays she's been putting in. Klingler up to Smith. Smith's going to drive into the paint. And you call that a jump ball? Yeah. Smith to Jellison. Jellison to the corner to K. Foul called there on number 23, Mercedes Brown. It's her second. Team seven. Team seven? I think team seven. Oh, team sixth. K to Jellison. Jellison off her own foot. Now, got number 10, Mackie Leslie in for the Zebras. Kicks it into Cammie Burkett. Burkett over to Brown. Brown to McKee. McKee into the paint and Got a travel called here. Travel on Caitlin Rogers. Kay dumps it back to Jellison. Jellison across midcourt. Tipped out of bounds by the Zebras. We got Emily Hughes and Millie Scorsoni back in for the Zebras. Lob into Jordan Klingler. Klingler got passes it off to, uh, yeah. She passed it to Maddie. Maddie was in heavy coverage, got wrapped up, and the Zebras take it off a jump ball. Burkett across the midcourt, sends it over to Macy Brown. 
Into Scorson, back to Burkett. Burkett for three, gets tipped. Into the corner to Kay. And Kay dribbles it on the out of bounds line. Cammie Burkett, cross midcourt. Scorson at the free throw line. We're going to kick it over to number 10, Leslie. Off the mark for that three pointer. Maddie Smith getting trapped on the sideline there. She was stuck, no help. Communication, it comes back to it. There's a lot of fundamentals lacking here tonight, Gav. Uh, Jellison looking for a play. She's gonna send it to the corner to Kay. K for three, short. And we got Maddie Smith drawing the foul. Under the basket, she'll go to the line for two. Foul there was on number 12, Macy Brown. That'll be her second. Smith's first shot off the mark. Second shot up, and it's good. Four minutes left in the game played here tonight. Burke it over to Brown. Brown's gonna draw the foul. Foul's on number 15, Lane Oliver, her first. Team third. Brown gets the ball just taken right out of her hands by uh, Sophie Jellison. Jellison down to Maddie Smith under. Big overhead pass. She goes to uh, pass it to Klingler, gets kicked by number 20, Emily Hughes. Jellison looking for a target, send it into. Aims for K, misses that inbound. Burkett across the half court line. She kicks it over to Hughes. Hughes sends it up, it gets tipped. Draws the foul off of uh, Maddie Smith. That'll be her second, team fourth. Hughes will go to the line for two. First shot's up. Off the back of the rim. Second shot up. Rattles in and out. Comments with the rebound. Ball into Emma K. K back to Jellison. Jellison to Oliver, down to the corner to Kay. Kay. At First Federal Savings Bank, we offer a wide variety of services for our customers. We offer a variety of deposit products, such as personal. And we've got Jordan Klingler at the line. Foul was on number 14, Jenny Isbell, her fourth, team eighth. Klingler's first basket good. 
I guess of course it's good if it's a basket. First shot was good. Yeah. Second shot up. And just off the front of the rim. Hughes over to Leslie. Leslie over to Batten. Back to Leslie. Back to Hughes. Maddie Smith with a block there. Had a foul on that. Foul was on Maddie Smith. Her third. Team fifth. We have Abby Williamson coming back in. As well as Kinsey Molenkoff. Score some with two. Williamson bringing it across midcourt. Drives down towards the quarter. Gets stuck in double coverage. Attempts to give it to Klingler. Goes out of bounds. Two twenty nine left in the game. Forty five twenty. Lady Zebra's advantage. Hughes with the ball. Sends it back to Mercedes Brown. Back to Hughes. Back to Brown. Kicks it over to Batten. Into Scorsone. Scorsone for two. Off the mark. Molenkoff with the rebound. Molenkoff over Smith. Over to Williamson. Back to Molenkoff. Hands it to Klingler. Klingler dumps it down to Smith. Under the basket. Smith off the mark. Smith forcing a turn, or nearly forcing a turnover. Forcing something. Carly Sarver in for the Comets. And Delaney Strasser in. Ninety seconds left in the game. Hughes with the ball. Over to Batten. Batten for three. Too hard. And Aubrey Degg back in for the comments. Degg across midcourt. Kicks it to Molenkoff. Molenkoff up to Williamson. Over to the corner to Sarver. Back to Degg. Degg for three. It's good. Oh, long two. two. Just, she was standing just in front of it. I thought it was a 3-2 at first, so. Degg's first shot attempt of the night. Hughes not paying any attention, and we'll have a backcourt violation. Caught that in the side of the face. That hurt. And Kaylin Rogers back in for the Zebras. Degg across midcourt, kicks it to Molenkoff. Down to Strasser in the corner. 45 seconds left. Up to Williamson. Back down to Molenkoff. Molenkoff thinks about shooting. Sends it back to Williamson at the paint. Triple coverage. She's going to send it up. And we got a backcourt violation on Degg. 35 seconds left in the game. 45-22. Zebra's advantage. Brown cross midcourt. Daig, very aggressive. She's got five fouls to burn. Uh, four fouls to burn. Shot attempt by Scorsone off the mark. 24. Williamson across midcourt. Driving down towards the basket. Oh, uh, loses control of it. Thought she was going for the layup. Daig gets a hold of it. Send to Strasser. Williamson in the corner. 12 seconds. Back to Strasser. Nine. Williamson for three. Off the mark. Five. 
And that'll be the ball game right there. Final score here tonight, Lady Zebras 45, Lady Comets 22. We're going to step away for a few words from our sponsors while we uh, come up with some final guaranteed wrong stats for the night. This has been Lady Comets, Lady Zebras basketball on Cast and TV on RTC TV4. Ever wonder why your local TV bill keeps going up? The bulk of these increases are due to rising network fees. A few powerful media companies dictate what TV providers must pay to offer their channels to you. And every time networks demand more money, that affects what you pay every month. If TV providers don't meet their demands, networks threaten blackouts. Since 1999, these network fees have increased by three and a half times the rate of inflation. To see what we're doing to keep network fees in check, visit TVOnMySide.com. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. Upgrading your RTC internet can really rev up your Wi-Fi. Here's why. Wi-Fi is a stream of data flowing through your home, and each online device removes a portion of that data, which can slow you down. Luckily, small changes make a big difference. First, choose the fiber internet speed that's right for you. Upgrade to a whole home mesh Wi-Fi network and secure your network with a password. Contact RTC Fiber Communications to get your Wi-Fi up to speed. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Blair Zimmerman, Gavin Hickel. We're just going to wrap up with some final stats here tonight. Final score, Lady Zebras 45, Lady Comets 22. And Gavin, I think that tonight was just a matter of fundamentals and aggression. Yeah, so, um, Lady Zebras, definitely they just, way more aggressive. All right, so... Lady Zebras, 31 three-point attempts to the Lady Comets, six attempts. Um, Zebras made six. Comets made zero threes. Lady Zebras, 25 two-point attempts to the Lady Comets, 13. Uh, Lady Zebras, just 10 for 25 from two-point territory. Lady Comets, three, uh, five for 13. Uh, Comets only sending the Zebras to the line for eight free throw attempts. Uh, they were just three for eight from the three uh, free throw line. Lady Comets twelve for twenty-five. Um, so shot percentages for the Comets were just abysmal. Obviously, <coughs> excuse me. Obviously, they could have made up uh, thirteen of that twenty-three point deficit just in free throws. Um, and then turnovers, uh, especially in the first half, um, the Lady Comets. Almost two for one turnovers to the Lady Zebras. Uh, second half a little bit better. Um, the Lady Comets stayed consistent at 13 turnovers per quarter for quarters two, three, and four, uh, where the Lady Zebras uh, started climbing in quarter three with nine turnovers over eight for the first two quarters, and then uh, 10 turnovers forced in there in the final quarter. Um, and the Lady Zebras just playing a much more aggressive uh, game. I think I've missed a couple fouls through the night, but two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, Lady Comets with uh, 10 fouls for the night, if my count was right, and most of those in the second half. Uh, Lady Zebras. With 20. Uh, so double the number of fouls on the night 
for the Comets, but a lot of that was just in that aggressive defense they were playing. Uh, forcing those turnovers is going to result in fouls. Um, and the Lady Comets just had no answer for that. Uh, no communication to be heard up here at the press table. Well, they had that, that intense press that was on the Comets all, all night. Oh, absolutely. And there was no there was no help from the other team. You know, well, once again, back to the lack of communication, and it just kind of got worse from there. Well, and, and once again, we've talked about this historically. Um, the, the Comets have struggled against a man-to-man -man or an extended zone defense, and that's what the Lady Zebras played all night long uh, as opposed to Lady Comets in a strong 2-3 zone. And uh, so the Zebras able to get it easily down to the volleyball line with no opposition every possession. So um, I'm going to guess after a game like that that Coach Hummick won't be up to talk to us this evening. And I, I can't say that I blame him. I know he's – I could see him on the sideline getting very frustrated uh, after turnover after turnover and that lack of communication. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here tonight. Um, and thank you for if you've stuck with us in spite of the technical difficulties we've had. Uh, final score once again, uh, Rochester Zebras 45, Casting Comets 22. I'm Blair Zimmerman, joined on the other headset tonight by Gavin Hickel, and we had Autumn Garling on the camera for us this evening. Uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching. This is RTC TV4.